The various parts that we're going to be tagging represent a structure file, and structure files come in a number of different forms. At the moment we're just using a biped structure file, and the biped structure file differs from some of the other structure files that we can create in here, in, in the case that I'm referring to, the biped fingers and foot roll, by the extra parts that come with the structure file. So this biped has a simplistic foot heel toe system. Uh, it doesn't really incorporate a foot roll. We want to create a structure file that allows for a foot roll as if you remember back in the rigging section we do have a built-in foot roll. So to account for that I'm going to turn the structure file into a biped foot roll structure file which accounts for these extra parts. The foot roll, the heel, the toe, and the tip. To begin tagging we'll use the various pick sessions. So I'll start off by picking the spine the COG sections. So we have the center of geometry which moves the character around. If I grab that, that's going to be my main movement control to get the character uh, locomoting from A to B along with the foot controls. The spine root just refers to the base of the spine. So the base of the spine is simply the hip constraint, uh, the system that made up our exercise spine, the quaternion spine. Our chest object is the chest constraint and our pelvis refers to the object that's going to give us access to contrapposto. So I'll pick the pelvis. To get at the thighs I'm going to have to open my explorer and make my unselectables group have no effect on members so I have access to the bones. I'll just minimize that explorer and begin picking the thigh. And when you start when it comes down to actually working with objects on either side of a symmetry plane, you'll notice that picking the right thigh, we're also picking the left thigh. At any time, you can simply just delete the rules, the tag rules that you've created, and begin picking again. And again, it'll just recreate the two of them. I'll pick the shin. And when it comes to picking the foot, they're asking you for the, the effector, the object that's going to essentially drive the IK. And in the case of our character, it's this little Bigfoot icon that does that for us. So when I pick the foot, I'll pick the foot there. Notice that it actually picked an incorrect object for the left foot. It picked the right leg control. And we don't really want that. I was actually just looking to the other side here to see if this was called the right leg control, but of course this is the left side. So in the event that the tag template messes up, We'll simply just select the rule that it created for us, delete it, and press enter, and pick the left foot manually. If we already have an object picked for the right foot, it won't try and match it up. So I'll pick the left foot control. And then when it comes to the clavicle, we'll start by picking the shoulder and move our way down the arms. So the right clavicle, the right bicep, the forearm, when we refer to the wrist, we're actually again referring to the IK itself, so I'll pick the right arm effector. And as for the hand, we're going to be picking the palm bone. So let's just verify that what we've done for the right side is of course the same for the left. So the shoulder bone, the bicep, the forearm, the arm effector, and the palm bone. So this looks good. At any time, you can select the objects that are represented in the tag template. For example, if I want to know what is the hips control, I can hit the select button to identify that object in my OpenGL view. So we can very quickly just move through our list and figure out which items we're working with. Now when I'm picking the extra parts, I'll start by picking the neck. I've got a two bone chain for the neck. I'll just use the base neck bone as my neck. And for the head, the simple head control that I've used will suffice, the one that allows us to control our head direction like so. Now when it comes to the foot roll, the right tip refers to the object at the tip of the toe that allows the feet to pivot from the tip of the toe. So I'll pick my right tip. And notice again that it's picked an incorrect object for the left tip. So I'll just clear off this selection and pick the left tip manually and keep on moving through. So the right roll, in my uh, opinion, refers to the actual roll object on the ball of the foot. 
and we do get the correct object being picked on the opposite side. Right heel. We'll refer to my heel control. Again, the object that rocks the foot on the back of the heel. And the right toe refers to my toe control, or right ball one. Again, it's picked an incorrect object on the left side, so we'll simply just delete the rule and select it ourselves. So when our template's finished, we just need to save the template. Uh, I just wanted to show you something that's happening in the Explorer at the same time. If we temporarily switch from objects only mode to show all parameters, you'll notice that by creating a tag template, you're creating a custom property that holds the tag template, and you're creating the, cust uh, the character development kit structure file. So again, these are the spatial relationships between the different parts that you've selected. So you can see that just the different offsets and the values for each of those objects. The tag template isn't actually finished until you actually create the glue that holds it all together. And you can actually create the glue, which is another type of custom property, by saving the tag structure file. So I'll hit save. And I'm going to store the tag structure file in the tag templates folder of my XSI 7 training project. Now this is a folder that I've made myself. It doesn't actually come with a project. So you can store yours wherever you'd like. I'm going to call this one the Mulcor. Uh, we'll call it the foot roll. Template. So I'll save the file. And as this file finishes saving, you'll notice we actually end up with two additional custom properties. The glue itself, and the mapping. So again, the distances between all of the objects. With that being done, we're actually finished working with our structure file. At any time, I can load a new structure file onto a character that has the same proportions as Melkor, or the same uh, objects named as Melkor. And I can also clean up the file, kind of reapply some constraints, replace some of the uh, the objects in the structure file, anything that will make the structure file behave better. A lot of times you actually have to load a motion capture file or an animation uh, keyframe data onto your character to see what's actually happening uh, with the various objects in the structure file. So our next step is to load some kind of data onto the character.